God said, I'm going to take you through Edom. You have to buy your food and water, and then you're off to the promised land. So God took away the water supply, and then they started to complain. They could see, here is the promised land. They have to wander and meander through Edom. But they lost an opportunity. They started to complain, we have a, don't have water. Why did you do this to us, God? Moses, what are you doing to us? And while complaining, the opportune time passed by. And when eventually they were recollected, it was too late. But something very sad happened here. I feel so sorry about this sad story. You know, they tempted Moses, complaining about water. Moses spoke to the Lord and the Lord said to Moses, Moses, I want you to go and speak to the rock because the rock is a symbol. You've hit the rock once, but you've got to speak to the rock. But Moses was so mad after 40 years of putting up with the nonsense of Israel. Somewhere in this area, he took his staff and went with him. Do you want water, you rebels? Taking glory to himself. And he took his rod and he hit the rock. The water hit it twice. And then the water came gushing out. But he realized he made a mistake. And somewhere here, God said to Moses, you will not enter Canaan. Aaron, you will not enter Canaan. Can you imagine the, the emotions that uh, he experienced, Moses? He came all the way, and he will not be allowed to take Israel through. Here we see the monastery. There was a shrine, according to some of his sources, where Miriam died and was buried here, and afterwards they erected this huge monastery. So they mourned about Miriam. It's a sad story. She became rebellious against Moses, complaining about his wife. I think Moses went through very deep disappointments, his own sister. She got leprosy, and she was isolated from the camp. Eventually she was taken back. And then Aaron and Moses, with two million people, moved somewhere in the Arabah, this barren place. They moved till they came to Mount Hor, according to Josephus and Eusebius, two great historians. And there Moses and Aaron and Eliezer went up that's where our friend Aaron died. While they were moving down, the king of Arad waged war against them. So they went through deep waters. After the burial of Aaron, he was mourned for 30 days. And then they start moving down to Ezion, give back to the Red Sea. But they complained again. Moses, what are you doing to us? And if you read the sources, the description of walking down the Arabah was no fun. Sand and stones. And then something shocking happened. Snakes started to bite them. People were screaming. People were dying. And suddenly they realized they complained about nothing. Now they had something to complain. So the Lord said to him, God said to Moses, erect a huge pole and put a, a copper brazen serpent on it. And everybody who looks at this will live. There was no healing power in the snake. But an act of faith would save them. Some refused. Their eyes become glazed and they died. Others looked and they lived. 
When we come to Nebu, we'll see an example of a, a copper snake. By the way, archaeologists discovered down at Aqaba, a copper mine. So the record of the holy books are perfect. And over in Israel, they also discovered at a place called Timna Valley, uh, copper mines. And in my research, I came across a serpent, a bronze serpent. So when you read these holy books, Muslims, Jews, Christians, you can be sure that archaeology backs up, confirms what you read there. So they went down to Ezion Geber, that's at the Red Sea. The Lord took them, God took them there twice to remind them of the greatest miracle of antiquity where a sea was parted. And from Ezion Geber, it's good news all the way to the promised land. At last, they learned to trust God. And my friend, if you and I can learn the lesson of trusting God, we reach the promised land because it's his business to get poor sinners like you and me over in the promised land. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in God but to trust.